والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wassalam wa rasulullah. You're watching Lifting the Fog, the series dealing with the subject of clearing up the misconceptions, misunderstandings, and misrepresentations referring to Islam and everything that Islam presents. My name is Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes in this segment, we'll be dealing with the subject of some of the words used in the Qur'an and how to better explain ourselves and what we mean by what we say. I'd like to begin by mentioning that in real life, people really do come up to you and say some rather bizarre things, and sometimes they ask questions <laughs> that are actually having statements in the question. And sometimes they're pretty harsh. And what can we do about that? What we're suggesting is to follow the menhaj or methodology of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him. And that is to remember all the time that you have a responsibility to Allah to always present yourself and your answers to these questions in the best possible light. Keeping that in mind, we remember that our Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was the epitome of kindness, gentleness, and a real gentleman in every aspect. Even when people were crude and rude, to him, even abusing him, even injuring him, we found that he would be the very best in responding and replying to the people. So in the same way, we as Muslims today have this responsibility to do the same thing. We're going to be talking about this throughout the segment today, and along the way, I think you'll be able to pick up on what we're talking about. Now, here's an example of exactly what we're talking about. Someone comes to you and they say, how come you Muslims thinks your religion is the only one? How come you don't believe other people can go to paradise? Why do you think that your religion's right and nobody else's is right? Well, that's a good example and it's a good question. What we can do in this case is to do as we should in every case, and that's let them know that we care about them. And we say to them, thank you for asking me about my religion. And smile. And they'll say, huh? Because they were trying to start a fight. And here you are saying something nice. So when you start this way, they kind of relax a little bit and go, oh, what? In Islam, we must always tell the truth because this is a very important part of our way in Islam. We must speak the truth. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya yuladina amanu attaqallah wa kulu kawlin sadida. Allah has told us in the Quran that if you're really a believer, then you should listen up because he's telling you, always speak the truth. This is very, very important. Have taqwa for Allah, which means that you're going to be a pious, God-fearing person and speak the truth, knowing that he's listening at all times. With that in mind, I'm going to return back to this specific question when they talk about what is this religion that we have that we think it's the only right one. Continuing with that, you say, also, we have the proof. We can prove what we're saying because everything about Islam has been documented, preserved, authenticated, and it's available today for us. And it, the same is true for the Quran and the Hadith. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam came with something that we call complete deen. And that's actually the word referred to in the Quran when Allah says, in the dina in the lahil islam unfortunately the translators limited on words in the english vocabulary have been forced to come up with the translation something like this and usually this is what it will say that the religion with the law is islam now what does that mean it sounds like allah has a religion and that really doesn't make a lot of sense some of the others, when we look at the verse in the same surah, it's in Surah Al-Imran, verse 85. Islam Adina, Fala Yukbala Minhu, Wahua Fila Khirti Minal 
And in this case, they translate that one to say that whoever seeks a religion other than Islam, then Allah is not going to accept from them. And in the hereafter, they're going to be with the losers. There's another verse we find in Surah al maidah chapter 5. Verse 3, in there it says, Al-Yawmul Akmaltu Lakum Dinukum Wa Atmamtu Alaykum Nipmati Wa Raditulukum Islam Adina. And again, they make a translation using the word religion. And it says that God is saying, On this day I have perfected your religion for you and conferred my favor on you and have chosen for you the religion of Islam. Well, it's not really wrong, but it doesn't present the message in the best possible way. The reason is because English is limited. It doesn't really have a word for Islam. Just as English doesn't really have a word for Allah, and then we substitute God, and we run into some of those problems, as we mentioned in an earlier segment. And in the same way, we realize that there's no word in English for this, Islam. So we have to really come up with the meaning of it, then it makes better sense. Because, see, the question that they ask us is, why do you think only your religion is right? How come these other religions don't work? Also, when we talk to an atheist, he says, I don't believe in any religion at all. They're all man-made. I believe there's a God. This would be not an atheist. He'd be an agnostic. Somebody believes in God, but he doesn't believe in any religion. He says, this is what's destroyed mankind, is to have these religions. This man said this, this man said that, and so and so. So here's what we do. Now, go slow, step by step. The word, the operative word being used in the Quran is always the same word. The word is deen. And the translators are saying religion. It's not totally wrong, but it's not the best word. And I'll show you why. I want to take you to another verse in the Quran. And those of you who have memorized this, you know it. Lakum dinakum wali din. You heard the word twice in this ayah. Who is this talking to? These are non-believers. Allah Almighty is talking here to the believers, telling them what to say and how to respond. To respond to those who are the disbelievers. You say to them, you go to your deen and I'll go to my deen. Well, what is deen? And again, if we use the word religion, you're going to have a problem because that's, <laughs> that's for a disbeliever. What if he doesn't have a religion? What if he's an atheist, a mullahid? In this case, he's using the wrong word. He doesn't have a religion. If you told him, do you or your religion, me or my religion, he'd say, what religion? I don't have one. So that's why we use the word way. It's not the best substitute either, but it comes closer maybe to the meaning, but it needs explanation. When we say way, we mean the whole way of life. What you do and who you are, what you're all about. And as they say in, in America, they'll say, and what's up with you? So... What's up with you in your way, what you're doing? This is this word, deen. And we understand from this, now when we go back and look, that this is a lot more than just a religion. Religions are, as some have accused them to be, man-made. But when we talk about deen, it's not man-made. That's why Allah said, al yomul akmaltu lakum dinakum. It is Allah who has perfected this deen. And He's perfected it for us as a favor. We understand this word deen then to be a way of life, a complete and holistic approach to the existence of the human being here on earth. Now we'll go back and look at those same verses again using the word deen with this understanding and see what happens. In Adina in the Islam. Now instead of saying religion, we'll say way of life. Watch how it changes this. It makes it easier for the person to understand. Indeed, the only way of life Allah is going to accept is for you to submit to Him in His terms. Because now we're going to also translate this word which is Islam. We're not going to leave that in the Arabic either. We're going to say submission to God on His terms. Because the combination of deen and Islam being used together needs for us to be more elaborate and then we don't have the misunderstanding that very often occurs when people say, your religion and my religion, what makes one better than the other? What we're saying here is, this is what Allah has prescribed, a way of life in submission to His terms. 
Now, when we come to the next verse, it becomes even more clear. Watch this. When we say, وَمَمْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ For sure, Allah is saying here, that whoever wants a deen, a way of life, other than what Allah has constructed for them, what He's ordered them to do, then He's not going to accept it. And then in the hereafter, they're going to be with the losers. Now, we understand that a little bit different now than we did before by using the word religion. It becomes more clear to us. And now let's go back one more time and look at the words in Surah Al-Mayadah. When Allah says, al yomu akmatu lakum dinikum. Here Allah says, on this day have I perfected your complete way of life for you. I've conferred my favor on you and have chosen for you to live and die in complete and total submission, surrender and obedience to my commands that I've laid out for you. And you call it submission or Islam. Now, I realize in the beginning it takes a little bit of time to understand and in some cases, it may be difficult for you to lay it all out. But this is why we have a chance for you to use the Internet websites that we have. And we suggest that you use that as a tool to back up what we're saying here. Ask the people to go and check this out for themselves. We have a number of websites out there. And there'll be a cup coming here in the program. We are watching Huda TV, by the way. And we'd like to encourage you to always watch here with us because this is something that you can come to on a daily basis and pick up more segments of this series, the series on lifting the fog, and also other series that we've been doing. We want to encourage you to utilize this over and over. If you haven't done so already, you might consider recording some of these programs so you can play, play them back at your leisure and then use this as a tool. And remember this, it's not for you to guide the people, but it is for you to try your best to communicate the message in simple terms that they can understand. We're going to take a break, and then we'll be back after this. My name is Shri Vituni, and this is brought to you from Huda TV. Um, in today's edition, we'll be discussing about uh, the day and night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equated the samawat with darkness, the firmament with darkness, and equated the earth with light. Why? Are there really pillars that cannot be seen? Or is it an unseen uh, uh, pillar? Everything is running, but the relationships are fixed. Yes. So that it would appear to people as if nothing is running, you see. We are destroying the, our environment with our own hands. And that's why the Quran says, Bismillah, We've been talking on the subject of the word deen. And we've been explaining that this word is better translated to the English language as a concept, as a complete way of life. And we've explained that when Allah uses this term in the Qur'an, He's referring to the way of life of a human being. And every human being has a way of life. So when Allah says that the deen that's only going to be acceptable with Him is Islam, and Islam means the submission and surrender and obedience and peace between the human being and Allah, it then becomes very obvious that the meaning here is that Allah is not going to accept that you make up a religion. So this is why we say Islam is more than a religion, it's a complete way of life. And it's the way of life ordained and ordered by Allah in His book in the Holy Quran. And when we understand it that way, we can better understand why that it was still the same thing for the people of the time of the Prophet Jesus. Peace and blessings be upon Him as well. And the same for the Prophet Moses. Peace be upon Him. And Abraham, peace be upon Him. So when we see in the Quran that Allah is referring to Abraham and his religion, the religion of Hanafiya, which means actually that Allah is saying here monotheism, because Abraham was a monotheist, believing that there's only one God and submitting to God on his terms. And this term is referred to also in Surah Al-Bayana, when Allah says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ دِينَ هُنَفَى 
وَيُكِمُّ السَّلَاءُ وَيُتُّ الزَّكَاءُ وَذَارِكَ الدِّينُ الْكَيَّمَةُ And so this, again, we heard the word deen mentioned twice here. And it was talking about the people before the Muslims. And it's saying here in the Quran, more or less the translation might be, that Allah says, they, the people before us, were ordered nothing more than this. And that is to worship Allah alone, without any partners, and keep this way of life clean and pure for Him. And all the worship is only for Him. To establish the worship, which we call the Salah, and pay the zakah, which is the uh, purdu, or the, uh, what they call the zakat in the Arabic language, to take care of the orphans and the poor. And then this is the only real way of life that's been ordained for the human being. This is the true religion, if you want to use that word, is to do all of these things. That's why we as Muslims would be better off to think about the words that we're using in English and tell people when we begin from the very outset that what we have in Arabic is a perfected work that none can match, duplicate, or even come close to. That's why we say that if you have a doubt about it, bring a book like it. That's a challenge that Allah gives us in the Quran, which we'll be talking about in another one of our segments, by the way. Now, when we talk about this word deen, it is one of thousands of words in the Quran that when you bring to English, you could come up a little bit short. Not in Arabic, but in the English language. I want to mention this too, that when we talk to those who follow the Jewish or the Christian religion, we should let them know that we're not saying that anything that came before Muhammad is totally unacceptable. In fact, the reverse is true. We're saying that before there was the deen with Muhammad. There was the deen which came with Jesus. And before Jesus, peace be upon him, was the deen as it came through Moses, and before him, Abraham, and before him, Adam. So every one of the prophets of Almighty God brought with them the message, worship God without any partners. Some of the prophets, we'll be talking about this in another segment, had books that they brought, or scripture that came along with them, or scrolls. Others simply brought the message, just worship God, turn to Him, repent to Him, ask forgiveness from Him. But in every case, they said the same thing, that you have to do what God wants you to do. Now, mentioning this, we can go back and look into the Bible for the Old Testament, for those who follow the Old Scripture, the Jews and others. They can find very quickly that there are commandments. And these commandments are not optional. They're not called the Ten Suggestions. They're real commandments. What's the first commandment in the Old Testament? This is one example to show them about the word deen. It says real clear, I'm the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt and the house of bondage. You know no other God beside me. Beside me there's no other God. Now, that's pretty clear. Then, in addition to that, the next commandment right after that says, You shall not make unto me any graven image. What's an image? In Arabic, it's called a senum, a statue or an idol. That God is not going to accept from us that we're going to make up some kind of image or pagan idolatry and call that worship to Him. Again, you can now understand this word deen. Allah won't accept that as a deen from you or me. Now, in addition to that, when we talk about the Christians following the New Testament, they also have been ordered to follow a deen. It mentions, for instance, in the book of uh, Mark, chapter 12, verse 29, that when they asked Jesus about the great commandment, he said, it is to know, O Israel, that the Lord your God is one Lord. You have to worship Him with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. He says, and I give you another commandment like it, and that's to love your brother as yourself. Well, certainly these are not suggestions, these are commandments. And these commandments are a part of the deen for the Christians. Also, we find in the New Testament, in the English translation, it says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, that Jesus is telling the people, don't think that I came to destroy the law and the commandments or the prophets. I did not come to destroy the law and the prophets, but rather I came to fulfill. 
and not until all things are accomplished shall a single dot or jot from the commandments be in any wise lesson. And he's talking about the Torah, the Old Testament, the law. And if we understand that, then we understand this was the dean for those people at their time. They were ordered at the time of Moses, when he went up on Mount Sinai, to come, when he came down, ordered to worship God alone without any partners. They were ordered also that they wouldn't make any statues. But along with that came some other orders, not mentioned in the Ten Commandments, but certainly mentioned in the same book, in the book of Deuteronomy, very clearly telling them about the eating and the drinking and the way to treat each other and how to deal with those who deviated and had bad conduct, those who stole and those who fornicated, etc. And it told about the punishment and all of that was their dean. And so likewise, it's the same God saying the same thing that He's not going to accept from us as human beings to have any other kind of dean, way of life, submission to Him. And this is for us today as Muslims to follow this understanding that it's not new. We're not saying the people of Jesus' time go to hell or the people of Moses' time go to hell or the people of Abraham's time go to hell. And the opposite is true. In fact, the Quran is clear about that when it says that these are the people in the right way, following the monotheistic religion. Hanifa. And this is what Abraham followed, this is what Moses followed, this is what Jesus followed, and this is what Muhammad followed. Peace and blessings be upon them all. And we can get a better understanding when we talk about this to people that the whole concept here is one of just taking our time to go to the scholars to ask them what is meant and then give the proper answer. And as we said in another segment, by the way, it's correct in Islam to say, I don't know. That counts as a right answer. When you don't know the answer, say, I don't know. But we can find out. Then go to the scholars, go to the imams, and sit with them and derive from them the correct meaning of what's being said, what's being taught. All of us, of course, are not prophets. And <laughs> we're not even qualified to perhaps go out and give any kind of Islamic ruling. But we should at least... Be responsible to give the correct message. When somebody asks us, what do you believe? What's Islam about? These things we should understand. The difficulty may come in in the English language, but that's why we have these programs. And each one of these segments is intended to present one aspect or the facet of the diamond of Islam in a way that it brings it about responsibly and simply that when we talk to the people, they'll say, okay, I get it. I understand it. Now, Let's go back as we started in the beginning of this particular segment when we talked about a person coming to you and saying, well then why is it that you believe yours is the only right religion and everybody else is going to hell? Okay, let's straighten out the question. We didn't say that. That is not what it says in the Quran, nor is it what the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said. It was very clear at his time for him that he was talking about people who had heard his message and understood it. There's a famous hadith or saying of Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he explained to the people, if anybody hears about me and the message with which I've been sent, and then they don't want to believe. Now he's talking about the Jews and Christians. If they've understood this message and then they reject it, then these are the people who will be in the hell. What did he mean by that when he said these people are going to be in hell? He said because they're not following and they know it's the right thing to follow. It is not an option for those at the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, to continue to follow the way that they had before Jesus came if they knew that he was actually the Messiah. The Quran tells us that he was the Messiah or the Messih. This means that they have to follow him and they acknowledge, yes, he's the one. And when they say that, then how could they not follow him? And this would be because of some stubbornness on their side or arrogance on their side or for whatever reason that they choose not to follow Jesus. So if the Christian can understand that, then he should be easily convinced that Muhammad did nothing more than the same thing here in this aspect, and that is to say the same thing. As you were following the previous messenger, good, 
Now it's time. This is the last messenger coming to you. And he's showing you this is what you need to do. And this is logical. It wouldn't be right for the Christians to follow only Moses. Nor would it be right for the people of Moses' time to say, no, I'm going to reject you and what you have. I'm going to follow that which came before. I'm going to follow what Abraham had. Because each time that Allah sends a messenger, he makes clear what he wants from those people in their time. And with the culmination of all of the prophethood coming and ending with Muhammad, وسلم, Allah tells us in the Quran, real clear, that Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but he's the Khadim and Anbiya. What does this mean? It means he's the seal of the prophets. No new message is going to come after this. The Quran is going to be preserved until the last day. And if we understand that, then this means that it's not an option anymore to come up with something else. That we have to stay on this teaching until the last day. So, this really makes sense now when we listen to another verse of Allah in the Quran, when He says, يَا يُلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَتَّقَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَعْمُتُونَ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And here Allah is telling us, O you who believe, fear Allah as He should be feared and give Him His rights. Meaning what? That you worship Him without any partners and don't die except as a Muslim. Now, somebody might say, well, I used to be a Christian, can I be a Muslim? Or I used to be a Jew, can I be a Muslim? If you believed in the message before without knowing about Muhammad, then you come in and you understand his message, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then you accept that, you're doing exactly what you should do. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us that those who are good in Christianity, and then they come into Islam, they're even better in Islam. So let's make dua and pray that Allah will guide all of us to be the best that we can be in Islam and help others to be guided to the same thing. You've been watching Lifting the Fog and Clearing the Misconceptions about Islam. Stay tuned to Huda TV for a lot more just like this.